Good afternoon. Welcome to E Thursday. I had to think for a second there because I'm so used to going on a Tuesday at half past one, but here we are on Thursday at 1.30 and I trust that you are all well and I've got something very um, interesting, hopefully encouraging, equipping to share with you today. Um, the title is Making Room for Prophetic Ministry. I think that's what I called it, Making Room for Prophetic Ministry. And you know what it's like when we make room for the Holy Spirit? We make room for what God wants to do. We have an expectation and we allow God to speak to us. That's what it's all about. So if you are not experiencing load shedding, um, if you can join in today, then say hello in the comments. And I will say hi to you as you come on, or I'll greet you at the end. I see Elana, your Kurbison is there. So good to see you this afternoon. Um, and then I'll also greet everybody at the end. But I suspect a lot of people can't get on because of load shedding. But the kingdom still continues to advance. So Elana, looking forward to seeing you on Monday night in Durbanville. We are, I believe we're going to have a fantastic month of Monday nights at Prophetic Advance in Durbanville. So let's get into today making room for prophetic ministry and why would prophetic ministry be so important to God because he says in 1 Corinthians 14 pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Now that sounds amazing. Pursue love, you know, do everything out of love, uh, make sure that the motive in your heart when you're ministering is love because it, if you read 1 Corinthians 13 it talks about how great love is love never fails and love uh, you know con you know love perseveres and doesn't seek its own and all these amazing things about love but how powerful love is when love is the motivation behind what we do for God and so it says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So a lot of people say they want the spiritual gifts. They want to prophesy. Let's stick to prophecy. They say they would love to prophesy. But I, if they aren't prophesying, then it means they don't believe they can, firstly. They're not confident enough yet. Um but it also means maybe that they don't really desire, because it says you desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So it's like God takes prophecy, prophetic ministry, and he says all the other gifts are amazing, and we know we need them all. I'm not elevating anything or anyone or any gift, but in the Bible here it says especially that you may prophesy. So why would God say Desire them all, but remember, especially, that you may prophesy. So, and then it goes on. I'm not, it's, it says here, okay, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. And that's one of the reasons it says, especially, that you may prophesy. Because if you just go to church and speak in tongues, they're not going to understand you unless they have the interpretation. Then it says, however, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, but then... But he who prophesies. Now this is God. This is how God feels about us. He who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. So it's on God's heart that these areas, edification, which means to build up, exhortation, which means to call near to God, and to cheer you on, and it means to comfort. Those things are on the heart of the Father for you and I. And he knows that if we desire the gift, but especially to prophesy, that we're going to get involved with his desire for his people and people out there in the world. Because, you know, you don't just prophesy to God's people. God wants to speak to everybody. So, I, I think you'll know that. Maybe God's given you a word for an unsaved person. And it, it points them to Jesus, or it's meant to. 
I'm not talking about the words you get when you see the unsaved people doing things wrong when you go and say, God says, if you don't repent, you're going to burn in hell. I'm not talking about those words. I'm talking about edification, exhortation, and comfort. Those are the basic reasons, basic but most powerful reasons we prophesy. So I see some more people are joining in, and we are talking today about making room for prophetic ministry. Now, Rory and I have been involved in prophetic ministry from the 1980s. And um, we started out uh, with a five-fold ministry prophet. Let me first give you this. I'll give you this very quickly because this is what I wanted to... Now, I must just remember to go back to our beginning. I'm making a note here that says our beginning... 1980s. We're going to have a 1980s disco party just now. Um, I want to give you this very quickly so that you know how this works. In 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the gifts that were given to men. The Holy Spirit gave gifts. I'm not going to read it, but it talks about the different, the different gifts. And one of them is prophecy, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, working of miracles to another prophecy. These are all gifts that were given by the Spirit of God to men, to you and I. So you may have some of those gifts, if not all of them. You may have them operating in your life or waiting there, idling in your life. Maybe prophecy, the gift of prophecy, you have it, but it's still idling because you haven't stepped into it. You haven't pressed the button and begun to use it, but it's waiting there for you to use. Then... If we read in Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about the other the gifts that Jesus himself gave to the body. And I did speak a little bit about this on Tuesday. So I just want to say this again so we know that there's a difference between the gift of prophecy that you have and being called into fivefold ministry as a, an apostle, because it says this, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, he himself. Jesus gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And the main function of, because we're talking about prophetic ministry, the main function of somebody given by Jesus as a gift. Will you just give me a second? I've just got to close the door here. You can pray in tongues while you wait. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Rory got a phone call and he didn't realize that I've changed rooms and he's right next to me in his study talking on the phone with headphones in. Monica Willifield, hi, precious Monica, nice to see you. I'll greet people as you come on. So what was I saying? Okay, so in Ephesians 4, it talks about the gifts. Jesus gave gifts. Men and women, I believe, who stand in the office that we call it the fivefold ministry because there are five apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers so the these people are not given by jesus to the body so they can stand behind a pulpit and look good if you read in ephesians 4 it will tell you the fivefold ministry is given to equip the saints for the work of the ministry if you heard me on tuesday i said this now, the word equip is very important because a person is called into fivefold ministry. Now, remember, I'm not just talking about a gift. Somebody who gets up in church on Sunday and they have a prophetic gift, so they get up and they bring a word that's edification, exhortation, and comfort. I'm talking about somebody called into ministry, fivefold ministry. And, and the reason that they are called is they heard something. It's not just a, maybe I'm called, I'll try this. People who are called into these ministries know that they are called. They might still be in training. They might not be out there preaching to thousands or millions of people. But they are still in training. But it doesn't mean they're not called. But it's different to a gift of prophecy, having a prophetic ministry. It's a calling as a prophet. So... The people who are called into fivefold ministry, the Ephesians 4 people, 
their main function is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So a prophet will come along, and because the prophet is a gift that Jesus gave to the church, he took, he saw this person, and he said, I've called you as a prophet. Now here's some of the equipment that is on the life of Jesus, and you're going to go and equip my people with the equipment that I've given you. It's very important. If you're called as a prophet, there's a process you go through because it's a great responsibility to be the, the mouthpiece of God. Now, all believers can hear from God, which is why 1 Corinthians 14 says, Pursue love, desire spiritual gift, but especially that you may prophesy. So the fivefold prophet comes and equips you to hear from God. The, the, the main function I'll get to the beginning now, our story. When we first started out involved in prophetic ministry, we both knew we were called, and we knew the area we were called to separately. Um, just because we are married to each other doesn't make me a prophet or Rory a prophet because he married me. We, we both receive a call from God. And so when we started in the 1980s, there were people coming out of the woodwork everywhere who were interested in what is this thing what is this prophet what does it mean and people would come to South Africa they would come to the big churches and they it was all starting the church was finding its feet we call it the prophetic movement and the prophetic is not a movement in the kingdom of God it's part of God's plan so it's not just a movement that happens for 10 years and it's gone but in the starting stages, there wasn't much understanding of what a prophet does. So people would flock to these meetings where there was a prophet hoping to get a prophecy. And I remember in the early days when Rory and I were invited to, to minister somewhere, there was this expectation on us that we had to prophesy to people. And maybe if you've been around long enough, you will remember people who came and they would line people up from one side of the room to the other, and they would spend hours and hours laying hands on a person and prophesying to them. And they weren't just words, you know, from the pulpit. I do this now and again while I'm preaching. God interrupts me. The Holy Spirit interrupts me, and I say, um, Monica, over there, God wants to bless you, wants to speak to you, or somebody over there, God wants to heal you. It wasn't like that. It was these long, in-depth words. Until these people left the hall. I've heard of some prophets, prophetic ministers, whatever you want to call them, having to be carried out of the hall because they were so exhausted after giving out so much. Because people had a reliance and an expectation on that one person, a prophet, to be the, the voice of God to them. So slowly, by the way, I don't go around calling myself a prophet. If anybody asks me, I call myself a prophetic minister because I know I hear from God. I know I'm called by God, but I don't have to wear a badge. Neither does Rory. You know, the title things, it's the fruit that counts. And it's, can you impart what Jesus has put on your life, which is the whole idea. This is what prophetic ministry is all about. Hearing from God, receiving revelation, being able to help other people to hear from God, being able to guide, instruct, um, teach, minister to people around the area of hearing from God for themselves. So, so after the 1980s, there, I think we began to get more of an understanding, I'm talking about the church, more of an understanding of this whole thing that it's not one person. You know, you've got to wait for a whole year before that person comes from America again and preaches and then maybe they'll get a prophecy. No. Now God has released revelation to you and I, to his people. We can all hear from God. And when the prophets come to town, we go to those meetings with our notebooks and our Bibles. And we take notes and we learn. We have open hearts and we receive the impartation. Because you know the impartation you will receive if you're sitting under somebody who's called with the fivefold ministry prophet calling. Firstly, it's obvious, you will receive revelation. An impartation comes. And you know what an impartation comes? It's something being transferred to you from the life of that person 
the Holy Spirit comes and imparts something to you. And so, because God says in 1 Corinthians 14, desire, pursuit, love, desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy, the prophets need to be aware, be ready, because God needs his people to prophesy. So our job now, there's a, there's a grace now, there's a freedom now that when we go and minister, if, the, if there's such a great expectation that everybody in the whole meeting is going to get a word, it's not our job to do that. So we release an impartation, we release revelation. The Spirit of God is given to every single believer to receive revelation from heaven. And when you go to a prophetic ministry meeting or whatever it is, and you come there and you say, God, I want to receive from you. You're going to receive what's on that prophetic ministry's life, and that is revelation. And so what I like to do, if I remember, if, if, it's a, if it's the Holy Spirit reminds me, when I do a meeting, I always pray for healing, because the Bible says, go and make disciples of all nations. It doesn't say go and prophesy to everybody, even though 1 Corinthians says we must desire to prophesy. The Great Commission says lay hands on the sick. So I like to pray for healing. But I also like to pray for revelation, that people will receive their own revelation, that they're not relying on a prophecy from somebody. Now, prophecies are great. That's what I'm speaking about today, making room for prophetic ministry. But you have to realize how important it is in this, this day and age, this season in the church, that we all hear from God. You are not deaf. You are not spiritually blind. You're not dumb either, but God has given you the ability to hear from heaven. And how do you think it happens? The Holy Spirit. We did a meeting yesterday, um, Rory and I, a ladies' meeting in Constantia, and and it, it was we love we love going to this meeting. Everyone's so hungry, and and I got up there and I, and I said, we are all designed to be on the same wavelength as God. The same frequency, the spiritual frequency, because he wants to speak to his people. There are reasons God wants to speak to his people. We're going to get into that just now. But you have to acknowledge the fact that God has wired you up in a way that you are designed to hear from God. You're not relying on somebody else to come and prophesy to you so you know which next decision to make. Should I live in Australia? Should I stay in South Africa? Should I get this job? It's all nice to get confirmation, but the first place you go for confirmation is to God himself. You feel the Holy Spirit saying something, there's change coming, I've got to make a decision about something. You say, God, confirm it to me. You don't phone Prophet Sus Susie in Timbuktu and say, I need a confirmation. You know, God knows how to confirm things to you. We, don't, we shouldn't have to go looking for confirmation, for decisions in our lives, when we have the Holy Spirit with us, saying, this is the way, walk in it. Okay? So, if you remember, we're going to look a little bit about prophecy, and now, now you understand, hopefully, a little bit about the, the, the gift of prophecy, that you can hear from God, you can get up in church on Sunday, you can go to a group, small group meeting, you can be in a restaurant, you can hear a word from God for somebody to edify, exhort, and comfort them. And it's a whole other session about the difference between prophets and people who prophesy. And I'm not going to talk about that now. So, you, you have to realize that on the heart of God, in the heart of God, it is, um, what's the word, important, it is very important, because I can't think of the right word, that we realize this, that he wants to speak to us. Without hearing from God, there's no life. There's, you know, when you speak, there's, when God speaks, there's life that comes. The atmosphere changes when God speaks. And um, so if you, if, you, if you listen to Tuesday's session, I spoke about the intentionality of God, how God didn't just throw the stars and the moon up there, hoping it would work. He designed, he, he placed the universe, the planets, the stars, the moon, the sun. He placed everything in position so that the universe would flow. 
And if he did that with the universe, he did that with his church here on the earth, um, intentionally positioned for these days where the glory will be seen upon his people because we are the church. Okay, I'm not just talking about a building. I said this. We are the church. So the church is intentionally placed. And then if you take it further, the workings within the church, he himself set these in place. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Where the word set is, um, talks about building. So God, with Jesus as the head of the church and you and I as every member individually joined and knitted together so the church works effectively. So if God has set the church in place, he's put fivefold ministry in place, he's got you and I in place, ready to fulfill a function to represent the kingdom, because the church on earth represents the kingdom, and the kingdom of God is not chaos, not disorder, not lawless, not everybody doing their own thing. It's God's ways and God's will, the kingdom. So when the church operates the, in the ways of the kingdom, and we operate in the way of the kingdom, we are going to see God's intervention. So now when it comes to prophetic ministry, if we are going to make room for prophetic ministry, we are going to see and hear things that are very strategic for the season. And if we are so distracted by everything else around us, we're not going to hear. Remember, Tuesday was Exodus 6, how God gave Moses this amazing word to the Israelites, I will rescue you, I will redeem you, I will place you in the land. Go and read Exodus 6. But they couldn't receive it because of anguish of spirit and heavy and cruel bondage. And so I want to pick up from there that there are still people in the body of Christ who have anguish of spirit because of the hard times that we've been through and cruel bondage, you know, heaviness, disappointment, things that keep you in unforgiveness and resentment. And the anguish of spirit means you you felt as if you've been struggling for so long that you feel that you cannot persevere anymore. That's anguish of spirit. So when Moses came along with this amazing word of freedom, salvation, rescuing, placing you in your own land. God even said, you will be my people and I'll be your God. They, they could not receive it because of the condition they were in. Now today, in Christ, we are already redeemed, rescued in the kingdom, our promised land. We have all the promises in the scripture. We have the Holy Spirit with us. We have the name of Jesus, the authority we have, our inheritance, healing, peace, Righteousness, peace, and joy is the kingdom of, of heaven. We have all of this, so we're not waiting for another promise because we live in the finished works of Christ. But when someone comes along and they say, it's a new season, God's going to do a new thing. What have I been saying? It's a season of oil. God is pouring a fresh anointing upon his church to make movement easier so we can arise and shine, so we can do things with his help. And if you're in a place where you feel you can't persevere anymore, or the battle has been so hard, it might be difficult for you to say, oh, yay, hallelujah, it's a new season. So these are areas which is why it's important to be hearing from God. We need to get the, you know, this, you know when people are out in the cold and they wear these things, we, they look like big earphones, but they're actually... Um, big fluffy things to keep your ears warm. We need to get those things off our ears and be saying, God, I hear what you're saying. I might feel as if I've been trying to persevere for so long. I feel as if I'm at the end of myself and I can't see anything more. I want to take these, not the blink, that maybe the blinkers need to come off too, but these ear muffs that are trying to keep me dull of hearing because God is saying, desire, pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. You can't prophesy until you hear. Earmuffs. Thank you, Renee. Welcome to you, Renee. I'll greet everybody in a little while. So we need to get these earmuffs off, and we need to understand the purpose of why God is emphasizing hearing from Him again. Without hearing from God, we go nowhere. We stop seeing what He sees. So let's get into this. You know, when I spoke about a ministry, this is how you recognize the ministry in your life. 
Never mind the call, the fivefold ministry call. I'm just talking about a ministry. What were the earliest desires that you had when you got saved? The earliest desires to do something for God. What were they? And if you can remember that, that will point you in the direction of where God wants you placed in the body of Christ. And I can say that because um, my earliest desires as a 14-year-old girl, when I first got saved, was to travel, to take the gospel to people who had never heard the gospel before. I wanted to be a missionary. And um, thank you, Jesus, that that was not the original plan of God for me, because now I don't see myself as a missionary. A missionary means someone who's sent. But my idea of a missionary was to go to these dark places and live in little shacks somewhere and get water from a well. You know, because when you're young, you think that's what ministry is all about. That's Everybody has to do that. And so, but I had a desire to, and I, I couldn't put it into words yet, but the, the desire was there to teach people the Word of God, to help people to grow in their Christian walk. Now, this was before I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. This was when I was in a Methodist church. I was 14 years old. And I loved God, and I would read my Bible every morning, and I was the only Christian in my immediate family. And I had these desires that as soon as I was out of school, this is what I wanted to do. Now when I look back, I can see I'm doing what those desires were. God put those desires in my heart. But they look differently to, they, you know, they, they don't look the same as they did the way I imagined them to be. And I'm so grateful because God knew how to get me to where I am today. And he knows how to take me further. But it started with a desire. So if you want to know what your ministry is, what are you called to do? And I'm not saying full-time ministry. Because full-time ministry means your time is full of ministry. Full-time ministry doesn't mean because you prophesy, you're going to leave your job and you're going to prophesy for a living. That's another subject. So your time is full of ministry, which means you don't have time for anything else. And God has called you, and God is your provider, and God is your everything. And that's your time is full of ministry. So let's get into this. Why is it so important that we are hearing from God today? And the first thing is, when there's a prophecy that comes, it means God is saying what he intends to do. And we can't see it yet, but we may not feel it yet. We hear something God wants to do. We can't even recognize it. But if we're alert and our prophetic generator is, even if it's idling, we will recognize God is saying something from heaven because he wants us to see what he sees in the spiritual realm. And he wants us to grab hold of it. And he wants us to work with it until it happens because the church is placed here on the earth with the authority that we have been given in Christ so that we can walk in the promises that God has given. We are called to occupy places and spaces here on planet earth. So when we hear from God, he's pointing us in a direction. This is the, the interesting thing I, I found out about prophecy is that prophecy received moves us into a different season. Maybe as an individual you can identify with this that you were in a dry season. You felt like you were had been in the wilderness for 40 years and no one was coming to rescue you. You you were praying, it's like you couldn't hear your prayers, you'd be beginning to wonder, have I sinned? Has God forgotten about me? And you go to church and someone preaches and everyone around you is going, hallelujah. And you're just standing there like a dry branch in the desert because you feel as if there's no life. And then God begins to speak to you or you receive, because prophecy is God speaking. Doesn't mean you called up to the front of the church, the person with the microphone says, and the Lord says unto thee, you know. Prophecy is God speaking. So God begins to speak to you, this communication that comes. And then something begins to happen because when God speaks, speaks there's life that comes. That even if it's a little flicker of a candle flame, 
there's life that begins to emerge because God is speaking. Um, and so when prophecy comes, but, but if that's God speaking to you himself and life comes, it's amazing. But when you receive a prophetic word from somebody, that word has the power, the impartation that comes with that word has the power to take you from one season to another season. You're, you're, you see a season change and you recognize there's life now. I don't feel as if God's forgotten about me because when God speak, speaks, faith comes. And you begin to get excited about your walk with God again. And you begin, to, God spoke to me and, and maybe he didn't confirm anything. Maybe he said something that you, it sounds too good to be true. You think, that's not me. But you recognize that when he spoke, life came. And you start, there's, there's an enthusiasm again. And you know, it's not enthusiasm or excitement. It's the life of the Spirit of God that has come by impartation when that word came. So God, in this time, when people might be feeling, maybe not you people, maybe people you know, might be feeling dry, confused, discouraged, say, God, I need to speak. <laughs> and God wants to speak to you more than you need to hear. He wants to communicate. Because as he begins to communicate, life comes. I have even had dreams at night where I wake up the next morning and I feel something has happened in my spirit life, in my spirit man. Something has happened um, because of a dream I had. I feel I get up in the morning and I have faith. With it, I went to bed that night and I was feeling discouraged. And I can't put my finger on why I suddenly have faith. And then I remember I had a dream last night. You know, I've had dreams where... I am dealing with demons in my dreams where I am. I remember this one dream where there was somebody standing in front of me and I was just rebuking the spirit or fear or whatever it was. And I was taking authority in the name of Jesus. And, and this, this thing was trying to fight back. But I just stood my ground and saying, in Jesus name, I, I bind you. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus, whatever I was doing. And then. This thing goes in the dream. And then I realize, oh, wow, I, I, in the dream I'm thinking, I really have been given authority in that name of Jesus. But in the dreams I get opportunity to exercise the stuff. In my dreams I prophesy the best messages ever to crowds of people. And then I'm prophesying to people. And, and it's amazing. And then I wake up the next morning and it's not because of the dream itself. It's because the Holy Spirit has done something in my life. God communicates to his people in dreams. I'm telling you, you have to believe it. Any kind of communication that comes from heaven is prophetic. Because prophetic means to hear from God. And to speak or to sing or to do something by divine inspiration. So your dreams can be divine inspiration that comes from God. And so in these days we need to be expecting God to communicate in some ways because he doesn't want us distracted, discouraged, hopeless, confused. He wants us to be people who are hearing from him. Isaiah 30, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. He's directing our paths as the church. He's showing us where to go. This is the goodness of God in operation. So when a word comes and you're propelled into a new season, you might look at it and say, I don't feel like I'm in a new season. Everything around me is the same. My husband's still giving me hassles. My kids are still on drugs. I still don't have favorite work. I still, I'm looking for a job. My bank balance is still in the red. Nothing has changed. That's when we stop and we say, God, that word came for a reason. Now, part of being prophetic means you take the word and you know what to do with the word. Now here I'm going to equip you. Remember, the fivefold ministry equips the saints for the work of the ministry. It doesn't just mean you're going to go into ministry. It means you're going to take what you receive and work it. And so when God speaks, you take that word and you begin to say, God, in the natural, I can't see anything, but I believe you've done something in the spiritual realm. I'm not in that season anymore where I was discouraged. That word came and brought life. I'm in a different season, and I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. 
I'm going to speak that word. Even if I hear myself say the word over and over again, I'm going to say it again until I believe it. I'm going to say it again until everybody else is tired of hearing me say it. This is how we, we move into our new season. God knows he's speaking. When a prophetic word comes, more often than not, God is speaking to who he sees you are becoming. And that's more like Jesus. So he's not going to treat you like a victim or like somebody who is, you know, so downtrodden and, you, you know, oh, shame, poor you, you know, let me help you up. He comforts, yes, and he encourages us, but he's going to point us in a direction so of a new season where the new season is where we are broken out of our limitations of old ways of thinking. And we say, God, I, I, I hear this word. I've grown somehow in the spiritual realm. I've grown in my spirit, man. I hear this word. And now, Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit who's going to help me to work this word so that I can become who I'm meant to become. And I can go where I'm meant to be going in the spiritual realm. So we are being prepared. Every time God speaks, he's preparing us to carry more of his presence. If there's going to be an end-time harvest, an outpouring of the anointing of the glory of God upon us, he's preparing us. He speaks to us to prepare us to carry more of his presence. Because God speaks, we grow on the inside, our faith grows, and we are being prepared to be these new wineskins who don't think the way we did before. It's God, what is it now in the season? We've, we've been broken out of limitations. Old ways of thinking. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of ideas here, and then we are almost done. I'm not keeping you for too long. We are almost done. How do you recognize the prophetic in your own life? When I say making room for prophetic ministry, I mean being available to hear from God. Saying, God, what is it you want to say to me? What do I do with what, with what you say to me? And maybe we'll get to that in a minute. What am I going to do with the stuff God has said to me? I called you to the nations and you still go to work nine to five every day. Um, I called you to be um, this and that and to do this and that, to support ministries. I've called you as a supply line in the kingdom of God. You know, have you ever heard those prophecies and you're still struggling to pay your bills? What do you do with those kind of words? You work those words with God. You say, Holy Spirit, show me what to do. But we'll get there in a minute. How do you recognize the prophetic in your own life? Firstly, big, big, big sign, post. You have a desire to pray. If some, for some people, it really takes discipline to sit with God and to pray. And then, if you're not prophetic, now we all go through these phases, okay? But if you're not prophetic, the first thing you're going to do is sit with God and bring all your problems and say, God... I know, oh, my, you know, my kids and my money and my job, I need healing. And, and it's not wrong to do that. We take our requests to God, remember, um, with thanksgiving. But we take our things to God. But as a prophetic person, you're going to find that you're going to sit with God and you're going to say, God, what are you saying? You want to be involved in the communications that are coming from heaven. You want to be involved in hearing all the strategies that God has. You just wired up that way to receive communication from heaven. The other thing is you're going to be extra sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you might think that I'm sensitive to the Spirit of God already. Um, you know, I know other people who, who never prophesy, but they're sensitive. But there's something about prophetic people is that they're wired up to be extra sensitive to the things of the Spirit. So they will pick up atmospheres in a place. They will discern things that other people don't even see. They, they meet people and they just pick up things about people. They, they feel uneasy in certain situations, which is why it's always important to teach prophetic people to be more focused on the presence of God than on those things you're discerning. Because a lot of people without instruction, without equipping, they go down that road of, oh, I see the demons, I'm a watchman on the wall, I need to do this, and, 
you know, they have all the names of all the demons and, and, and the things. And those, it's, it's good to know those things if that's how you're called. But as prophetic people, we need to be guided in the right direction. Prophetic people hear from God. They're not focused on the devil, the voice of the devil. They hear from God to speak to, pe to, to people. Okay, Remember that. That's also a whole other subject. Prophetic people somehow have a hunger to study the Word of God. Because the, the Word of God is our foundation. Those scriptures are the most prophetic things you can ever read. Every story in the Bible is a prophetic word to you and I that God wants to do that again. Everything in the Bible, the good things, okay, the good things. Uh, prophetic people have dreams, that, not all of them, but some people, God communicates in dreams, and they're very specific dreams. So maybe you're listening to me today, and you have a lot of dreams, but you don't know what to do with them. Just recognize that the, it could be that this is how God communicates with you. If you have a whole lot of nightmares, and you're always fighting with demons in your dreams, then maybe you need some prayer. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're prophetic. It just means the devil's got involved in your dream life. And you know how you close the door to that? I'll tell you out of experience. You read your Bible before you go to bed. You pray in tongues. You, you close, before you close your eyes at night, you say, Thank you, Lord. I Only you can speak to me in my dreams. I close the doors to all the other influences. I'm not going to watch all these violent movies and listen to a whole lot of rubbish and then expect God to speak to me in dreams. So we close the doors and we say, Thank you, Lord, you are involved in my dream life. Um, then there's a desire to spend time with others who operate prophetically. You find you look for those people who who are the intercessory type, the worship types, the people who prophesy in church. Somehow you, you, you are attracted to those people in a nice, normal way. Um, you know, you want to be friends with them. <laughs> you want to learn from them. or you, want, you just want to talk to them because you can see something on them that you can relate to. And it's this prophetic thing inside of us. Um, this, is, this is how I first realized I was prophetic. I would go to church in the early days. I would go to church and I would know what the pastor was going to preach on. Not word for word, but I'd have an idea. And I would sit there and the guy, sometimes scriptures would happen to me. I would have the same scriptures. I remember going to meetings in the 1990s where I had my Bible with me and I had notebooks and everything. And there would be people who would get up and preach and I could open it and I could say, this is exactly what God said to me yesterday or this morning. Here comes the next scripture, and it would be exactly that. I'd put the TV on, and here would be somebody preaching, like Ray McCauley. And I'd be in the kitchen, and I'd hear these people preaching, and he'd be saying things, and I used to joke, and I would say, I think that they saw my notes before they got up and preached. So he's preaching my message. And you know what it was? It wasn't God making me feel spiritual and fantastic it was the holy spirit teaching me to recognize when he spoke to me and he was confirming that i was hearing from god okay so it's amazing when god does that he should be doing that with all of us so we go to church when our leaders preaching away and we can say amen god said that already and we're all in agreement um, the other one is we this is a this is a big one and this is an area of grace for prophetic people but it's how we are meant to be. We will have a compassion for the hurting and broken people. Because you know what prophetic ministry is all about? Part of it is God wants to restore the broken and the hurting people. And so prophetic ministry comes from the heart of a father who is gracious and kind and loving kind, you know, loving kindness and tender mercies and forgiveness. And we have a compassion for these people. Remember Jesus he had compassion for the people around him, and he ministered out of that compassion and that mercy. Prophetic people have to carry that. So, you know, these things I just read to you are just little signposts along the way of why you can, how to recognize the prophetic in your life. But it doesn't make you a prophet, remember? A calling 
makes you a prophet. Now I'm going to give you a couple of points, then we are done. Um, why, why is prophecy so important? Why should we make room for prophetic ministry? Isn't it enough just to go to church and hear your pastor preach a message? Or you put your TV on and there's somebody preaching? Or you have a dream? Isn't it enough? And God says, no, it's not. He wants to be actively involved in his body. He wants to be speaking through his people and encouraging people out there. So, um, firstly, when it says here, he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. Prophecy reveals the heart of God. Number one, when we speak on behalf of God, remember this, if you're the person prophesying, you're revealing the heart of God to his people. You are not just um, speaking something to some um, spiritual or to make people think that, oh, wow, I've got this heart line to heaven. It's a responsibility because you're not just a mouthpiece for God. You are revealing his heart. So when we speak on behalf of somebody else, we need to make sure that we are representing him well. So we have to know the character of God. That's part of the whole process of somebody's called as a prophet. You have to understand the times of hiding, the times of obscurity, where you aren't out there and everybody's clapping because your prophecy was so accurate. It was just you and God because you're getting to know the heart of God so that when you speak, you reveal his heart. God never just speaks a word and it's just a whole lot of words. When he speaks, it's, this is who I am. This is, you know, Moses said to God, um, show me your ways that I may know you. And I don't believe it's only prophets who need to know this. It's every person who desires to prophesy, to edify, exhort, and comfort. We have to say to God, show me your ways that I may know you. So when we prophesy, we're revealing him because we know him. And that will, I believe it takes forever to know God. But we have to have an understanding of his character when dealing with people. Very important. Prophecy comes to increase our faith. Obviously, when you hear a word, there's faith. Wow, this is what God said. And even if it's too good to be true, there's a seed of faith that gets deposited. If you're going to receive that word, you're going to walk away and say, yeah, that sounds so great. It's amazing. But I don't know if it can ever happen. There's a seed of faith. And as you pray into that prayer, as you say, God, I believe what, what that word was. I believe what you said to me. I receive it. And you begin to meditate on it and, and wage warfare with it. Because that's one of the, another reason, 1 Timothy 1.18, and you can read the scripture later, that you, you wage warfare with what God says. And then faith begins to arise and you begin to see. You see from God's perspective. If you're willing to take that seed of faith that came, Wage warfare with it, meditate on it, pray it back to God, tell it to your friends, tell it to the enemy, and, and walk in that thing. And your faith will grow until you see yourself believing what God said. That's how it works. Um, uh, prophecy comes to give us a strategy to pray. Very important. Sometimes we don't know how to pray because we're looking at the natural. And then a word comes. You know, it's like in the Old Testament, they went to God and said, should we go to war? Should we go up against these people? And God would give them a strategy. Yes, go to this place. And I'm going to cause confusion on the enemy. Then he said, don't, don't go up, just stand still. The battle's mine, it's not yours. So when a word comes, he's showing us how to pray. Very important. Some people just get a prophecy and they think, oh, wow, that was amazing. And they sit back and wait for God. But in that prophecy, if you listen to it again, which is why we always say record the words that you're receiving. Get your phone out, record it, get someone to write it down so you can listen to it again. And you'll hear in there, God is showing you how to pray. And then you say, Holy Spirit, come and this is the word. Show me how to pray. In the old days, we would say, take the word. Maybe today it's also a good thing to do. You get a word from someone at a conference or a meeting and you take it to your cell group leader, the people you pray with, and you say, here's the word. Help me work through this word. And they'll pray with you about the word and they'll tell you how to pray. That's how it is. Prophecy is like um, receiving a very expensive gift. 
that you take home, some people take it home, and they put it in a box and they hide it away uh, because they don't want to mess it up, and then they bring it out when you get special visitors, and then it's out there on the show, and you talk about your prophecy. Prophecy is meant to be worn when you get it. You bring out your expensive jewelry or your expensive teacups, and you look at it every day, and you use it every day. You use it as a weapon. You walk in it, and your faith just grows. Very important. Prophecy comes to reveal that God knows and sees everything about us. And I've got scriptures, and I'm going to end here. Psalm 44, verses 20 and 21. If we had forgotten the name of our God, or stretched out our hands to a foreign God, would not God search this out, for he knows the secrets of the heart. Amazing, eh? that's God. 1 Corinthians 14, 24 and 25. But if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all. This is, how, this is what tells me the prophecy is not just for you and I to have a little prophecy club where we prophesy to each other. And this is when you hope there are some unsaved people sitting in a meeting and you prophesying and it says here, he's convinced by all, he is convicted by all, and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. That's why we make room for prophecy. When we speak and we're hearing from heaven and we say, God, you are so good. God says he wants to heal people today. And there's an unsaved person sitting in a meeting and they've been to the doctor, like the woman with the issue of blood. They've done everything they know to do. They've spent all their money. And here this, what unsaved people think we are, this crackpot, this fruitcake, this nutcase gets up and begins to prophesy that God wants to heal. And I don't even know God. And then they get healed in the meeting. And then, if that happened to anybody, they, they would be totally convinced, totally convicted, and have to say, God is here. Now, these are the powerful times of prophecy that I believe God is setting us up for. That it's not a prophecy club. So, prophecy will change our way of thinking. It, it, you know, it, brings, it causes us to give birth to the things that God has said we're going to give birth to in the spiritual realm. It ignites our faith. And we begin to believe him again for better than we have ever known. And the reason is God will be glorified. So when, how do we make room for prophetic ministry? We say, God, I'm hungry. We say, God, I'm willing to listen. I'm ready to hear. Also, I'm ready to step out and share what you've given me to share. Maybe you're too scared to get up in case it's not God. You know, um, I'll, I'll share this quick story with you before I end. And, and some of you may have heard this already because I've been sharing this since we first started doing prophetic schools. So I read this in a book many years ago that there was a man and he was not a Christian. He was very discouraged and he actually was on his way to go and commit suicide somewhere. I think it was happening in the UK. He was on his way. There was a bridge somewhere that he intended to jump off. True story. But on his way there, he passed by a church, and the church was open, the doors were open, and he could hear people in there who were, they were obviously worshipping God. He could hear things happening in there. So he thought to himself, the grace of God always amazes me. He thought to himself, if I go in there, I'll just slip in there and sit in the back row and see what happens. He sat in the back row and People were singing up front and worshipping. Remember, this is a non-believer. And he stood there and he, he sat there and he said to God, God, if you reveal yourself to me, I will not go and commit suicide. I'll serve you. But you need to reveal yourself to me. And he, you know, people always make it hard for God, but they don't realize who God is. He said, if you tell me what I had for supper tonight, I'll believe it's you. So there was one little, uh, the book describes her as a little old lady who was up front. And this lady was up there worshipping God. And she kept getting this very strange word, just one word. And she obviously wrestled with it for a while. And then she went to the front. She got the microphone and she said, 
this is very strange, but I really feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit that I have to say this. And the word was macaroni. So, of course, the man in the back who had made this deal with God had macaroni for supper. What did he do? He didn't run out the back door and go and jump off the bridge. He ran to the front, fell on his face and got saved because he had had macaroni for supper. So, what I'm saying to you is, <laughs> when we make room for God, and we get these words that sound off the wall, now please, don't go to church on Sunday and jump up and say, cheeseburger, you know, unless it's really God, because then I'll get the blame. But we get these words that don't seem to make sense, but there's somebody sitting there who needed to hear that word, and it could save a life. So... In this day and age where I believe God is revealing His glory, He's releasing a fresh anointing on His people, Joel chapter 2, we in these days, in the last days, I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Expect to see your kids prophesy. Expect your kids to get up in the morning and to say, I had a dream and I saw Jesus in my dream. Expect these things. And so if you're an artist, expect God to show you pictures in the night, in dreams or visions, whatever it is, that you're going to paint, and you're going to have an opportunity to put that up somewhere, and that is going to minister the heart of God to some somebody. So in these days, where God wants to reveal His glory, we need to be people who say, God, I'm willing, I, I'm ready to hear from you, and we're going to do what He tells us to do. So I trust you were encouraged today to desire, pursue love. Firstly, remember, pursue love. Desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy and be expectant to hear from God. Big key, be expectant to hear from God. Let's see, Jennifer Rippon is, yes, be expectant. Thank you for that, Jennifer. Petra Pele, good to see you. I'm going to see you on Saturday, Petra. Um, 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 and willing, big one. Expectant and willing. Monica, it was so good to have you with us today. Supercarzi, nice to see you. Noma Temba, great to see you. I hope we're going to see you, ladies, on the 18th of Feb at Connect for our prophetic morning. And the ladies who signed up for mentoring starting on Saturday, I'm so excited about that one. We are absolutely full, so I'll have to do another one. Lena Svensson, good to see you. Um, somebody's in Brisbane. Elania Kurbison, Renee Edwards, Marlene Matia. Who's in Brisbane? I just have to go back and see who's in Brisbane. Natasha Hoss is here. Colette Nell. Virginia Gull in Brisbane. Oh, I love to see the Australians. Welcome to you. Um, Pietro, Saturday. Can't wait. Anybody watching who's coming to mentoring on Saturday, please park on the left, uh, on the side of the road that is next to the house in one line all the way down the road. Please don't park opposite the house because the neighbors don't really like that because it's quite a narrow road. Um, 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 I saw number 10, Marlene Mattia, Lena Svensson, Ilana, Renee Edwards, um, Oh, Daniel Dubrovsky, hi to you and your family, Daniel, Michelle Cravenstein, good to see your name, Lamise Bailey, Lynn Kampf, um, Diane Santiago, good to see you, I know you're watching from somewhere else outside of South Africa, Diane Santiago, um, Renee Iber, see you on Saturday, Gertrude von Rensburg, great to see you too, Lizzie Dzawala, I probably Zawala. I hope I pronounce that properly if you're still here. And Monique Little, I'm going to see you on the 18th. I've got your manual ready for you. Amanda Mamkoche, good to see you. Mona Smith, always good to see you. And I think I'm going to... Chris Clark was watching, good to see you. Colleen Swartz. Taryn DeFree, Saturday is coming. Um, and I think... Mariette Wright, I said hi to, I think. And there's so many names and comments here. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I preached myself happy. I'm now going to go to God and say, God, I'm ready to hear even more. So have a fantastic Thursday. Tomorrow is a bite-sized word. 
and I will see you uh, hopefully on the 18th, all of you and the others on Saturday. So have a fantastic Thursday and a great weekend. Lots of love. Bye. Thanks for joining today's session. I hope you were equipped, empowered and encouraged today by what you heard. Remember you can find all the live video sessions that you may have missed on this page, on the Facebook page Kathy Mole Ministries or on YouTube, Kathy Mole on YouTube. You can also find all the other resources on kathymole.com. Thank you.